This is Grandmaster Exorcist, sole developer of Project Gracie. Version 1.12.2 is available on ModDB. Free to play and open source. This is a vanilla Minecraft world that is universally compatible with any 1.12.2 mods. I'm in the process of translating the commands to future versions of Minecraft. This is what you get in the downloaded file. A README, skin overlays for your Minecraft avatar, the minigame world itself, and the scrapbook world I used to test my machines. When you first load into the survival world, you'll realize that no hostile mobs spawn in naturally, despite playing on the easy difficulty. Don't worry, that is normal. Do not change the world to peaceful. You will also not take damage in the world as all players are affected with regeneration, water breathing, night vision, and saturation. This is also normal as these buffs are requirements for all players. It is impossible to die in this world, nor is it possible to see dark places. Most importantly, all arrows fired from bows are unaffected by gravity. So there is no range drop off, and you will always hit a target that is inside your crosshairs. Speed is unaffected, so don't spam shots. You achieve nothing for doing that. Before you start playing any of the mini games in this world, please note that items dropped in the world will be automatically deleted, so you may want to remap the drop item key to one you will not fat finger. Also turn off auto jump, I'll explain that later. Every mini game in this world has a privacy feature. Pulling the lever will set a barrier block over the pressure plates in order to keep spectators out, and the competing player in. It's also impossible to lock the minigame from the inside. Every minigame also features a green switch to start, and a red switch to stop the battlefield. Pressing the green switch multiple times will not duplicate the entities, flooding the world with mobs, with the exception of Stampede Block. With this all set in mind, let's start playing. Oh I forgot to mention, Auto jump is supposed to be disabled because competing players are only allowed to battle inside of the lapis lazuli barrier seen here. Stampede block. When you start, there is a delay and it is intentional. Wait for the lights at the end of the track to flash. That means the wall is coming. You have three shots, make them count. Let's say you're taking turns with another player in your server or LAN world. The next player has to beat your score so they push the button more than once. Side note, wait for the audio cue of the button retracting to stop before pushing it again. Keep trying to top each other's score until one of you underperforms. Any sections of the wall that travel on the reverse track will impact your score. Space Revolution Attack From the vantage point of a minecart moving along a circular track, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Your arrows may not be affected by gravity, but they are affected by the minecart's movement, so lead your shots. Eliminate as many of the targets on the field as possible, valued at 1, 3, and 5 points each depending on what you hit. All objective targets in every game are named and tagged so they can be implemented into a scoreboard. Don't exit the minecart until you run out of ammo or eliminate all targets. Your opponent has to beat your score. If both of you sweep the battlefield of all targets, achieving the maximum target value score, the deciding factor will be the number of arrows remaining in your inventories. Enchanted Bridge Breaker All minecart targets are worth 50 points each, and the last target at the end is worth 100 points. Eliminate as many of them as possible. Don't worry about hitting the end target early, you will not get punished for doing that. If two players achieve the maximum score by eliminating all targets, just like in the Space Revolution attack, the number of arrows remaining in your inventory will decide the ultimate victor. Also, this minigame is imperfect as the hitboxes don't follow the mobs exactly, that just means the targets are harder to hit and you have to predict where the hitboxes will travel. This minigame is also the only one that shoots back at you, this is not a feature, it is a bug and it has to do with how the 1.12.2 game engine works. 
Don't worry, with regeneration enabled, you take no real damage. 7 targets. Exactly. You have approximately 15 seconds and 14 shots to sweep the field. After the time expires, your remaining ammunition will be removed from play, and any remaining target will impact your score. Careful, the targets fragment when hit, and they deploy a smoke screen. You and your opponent are trying to top each other's score within the agreed number of rounds you want to play. Think of it like bowling at the local 10-pin lane, your best chance at winning is going for the strike. Expect games to go 20 rounds total, divided by both players, that is 12 rounds each. There can only be one winner. Furious Gate Trap As you can see, the control system is different. You have to first pull down the lever, then press the button. To stop the minigame, you have to pull the lever up. However, unlike most of the minigames in this world, it doesn't have an automatic shut-off feature when you exit the arena, so turning off the machine is a requirement to maintain optimal performance while playing other minigames. With all that said, your objective is to hit as many buttons on the red wall as possible, they will turn green. Keep shooting until you run out of ammo, but don't turn off the machine just yet. Count how many green blocks are on the wall, your opponent has to beat that score. Final Rush Don't worry about other people stepping on the pressure plates, they are protected by barrier blocks while your match is in progress. You have approximately two and a half minutes, and one shot for every target in the arena, make them count. Blue targets are worth one point, brown targets are worth three, and gold are worth five. Any arrows remaining in your inventory will be removed from play after the time limit and you will be teleported out of the arena. Any remaining targets, depending on their value, will affect your score. This mini game looks similar to Kovacs 2.0, except it's nowhere near as good. However, this mini game has something Kovacs doesn't have, multiplayer. Side note, leaving the mini game room will automatically reset the arena. Break Bomber. The goal of this game is to knock out three of the five red targets before your opponent does. Before that happens, both players have to clear out the yellow targets. Only the red targets have names and tags for scoreboard commands, and rightfully so. There are 25 targets total and both players each have the same amount of arrows. Prior to battle, both players must agree to either a single round death match or a best of three, five, seven, fifteen, or as many rounds as they want to play against each other, as long as it's an odd number and everybody is keeping track of the scores. Scoreboard commands are important for accurately determining the winner, unfortunately my command block programming knowledge stops well before that, 1.12.2 does not support scoreboard commands, and future versions of Minecraft currently crash my PC. Fabled Crush You'll notice that there is no red switch to cancel the match, because it isn't required, there is a yellow switch, and its job is to refill your ammo. The objective of this mini-game is total war. Besiege the enemy castle, defeat all of the minions, either from the top, bottom, or middle of the castle, any way you want to battle. Your objective is to eliminate the enemy king. However, you cannot simply take him out. You have to eliminate all of his foot soldiers in order to make the king fall upon his own sword. When the king falls, the winner will be indicated and the battlefield will be automatically reset. Leaving the arena will cancel the battle. Mateo Bomber. We have to take the elevator. This game features two locks, the yellow switch, the red switch and three more switches. A referee will be present to dictate where, when, and how many of the pucks spawn inside the ice rink. Do not push the red button until the outcome has been reached, depending on if it's a best of three, five, or higher. 
if there are only two players, you don't need a referee, but both players have to start in the middle and race to the battle positions. This is beat a man's answer to hockey. The player with the most pucks in their opponent's goal is the winner. For example, by a score of 2 to 1 I have kicked my own ass. Not surprised at all, because apparently the only person in the world who can beat Grandmaster Exorcist at Project Gracie is Grandmaster Exorcist. After all, I developed the game. Welcome to East Crest Land, you're a long way from East City. We don't play crossfire in this town, we play road fight. Honeycomb net battle. You've seen these targets in my previous video, you know the drill. All side by side battlefields, just like fabled crush, are bordered by a barrier to prevent shooting into opponents battlefields, unlike the anime. Best of 3, 5, 7, you get the idea. Chicken wire, or honeycomb material are non-existent in 1.12.2. So these two grids of ender rods will have to suffice. See these lights above the battlefield, they will light up when a player achieves the maximum score. Unlike crossfire, we don't count the arrows remaining, we instead determine the winner based on who swept the battlefield first. This battlefield is set in a construction site, filled with easter eggs. Vertigo spin. Once the target spawns in, shoot it as many times as possible. The farther away it gets, the harder it is to see, let alone hit. Keep shooting at it anyways, eventually you'll cross the finish line. Lights at the end of the track will indicate who won the race. Vertigo spin matches will end almost as fast as they start. I have nothing more to say, please enjoy the rest of the video. Dragon Slider, the only mini-game with an above-ground mechanism, visible to all players, but of course, protected by barriers. Just like Mateo Bomber, if there are only two players and no referee, you both must race around the structure to enter your battle positions. You're each equipped with seven shots, and there are only seven targets. Four is the majority, that is your goal. Even if both players miss and hit less than four, then whoever hits the most targets will win the match. However, that's not all. This mini game has a little trick up its sleeve to make it harder for both players. DX Break Bomber 7. It's Break Bomber, but extended. First to knock out 4 green targets wins, but that's not all. Pull this lever and push this button. Now it's more fun. Remember to pull the lever again to turn off the slider before you leave the minigame arena. I've got nothing left to explain, so please enjoy this time lapse of a sunrise traveling up the target tower. <laughs> 